Hello, in this particular video, what I'm going to be talking about is how to work with formulas. Okay, and formulas are nothing more than um, equations that have meaning to them. So I have some formulas here uh, listed. I'll, I'll tell you what they are here in a second. But I want to highlight basically four main points. Okay, uh, these are the points I want to make, and I'll explain them one by one here in a second. But we're going to talk about four main points that you really need to be um, aware of to work with formulas correctly. All right, let's talk about uh, these particular formulas. These are just examples. But formulas are going to be found um, in your math class, but very, very common in science class, whether it's physics, chemistry, biology, you name it, you're going to see formulas everywhere. Even if you're in a particular trade like electronics, um, you know, uh, medical school or medical training, uh, nursing, etc. So let's just talk about these particular formulas real quick, or just um, at least go over what they are. And then we'll use one of them as an example. Uh, so as I kind of go through these four critical areas that you need to be thinking about when you use formulas. So the first one is from physics, and this is force equals mass times acceleration. So unlike a basic algebra equation, let's say I had something like 2x plus 1 equals 5. This is a, just an, an equation in algebra, but the x doesn't really have any meaning to it. It's just a simple equation that we would solve. However, uh, the formulas are equations that where, where the variables actually have meanings. Okay, so they represent something. So for this one here, for example, is force equals mass times acceleration. Second one um, is from algebra. Um, and this is where we, uh, this is the point slope formula for graphing a line. So y equals mx plus b. M is a slope and b is the y intercept. This third formula you're probably um, very familiar with. It's from Albert Einstein. And that is uh, energy equals mass times a constant squared, where the c is the speed of light. Constant is the the, the constant, which is the only constant in the universe, if I recall correctly, for this particular formula, which is the speed of light. Uh, this fourth one is area equals pi r squared. That's the area of a circle. And then this last one here is a distance formula where we use basically um, to find um, the distance between two points on a plane. Now, I have going to put down another famous one here. A squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, this is the Pythagorean theorem, but it is a formula, okay, where a, b, and c um, are just not just plain numbers, but they're actually the the lengths of the sides of a um, right triangle. Now, with formulas, okay, you got to be very careful when you're working with them because there's a little bit more involved than just a simple than a uh, simple equation, okay. And by the way, too, these are basic formulas, but, but formulas can get much, much more complicated for sure. But let's just go ahead and focus on these uh, real basic ones to make the points that I'm, um, you know, want to uh, stress. Okay, so the first one is evaluate. Now, evaluating a formula means, hey, let's actually apply it. Let's use it. So let's just take our uh, first formula here as an example. Let's say I wanted to calculate the force for something, okay, and I have the mass and the acceleration. So when I evaluate a formula, okay, you want to use parentheses when you're plugging in the values. So for example, I'm just going to make up some values here. Let's say I have a mass of 10 units and I have the acceleration being, let's say, 3, okay. When I plug in my values, I know I have force equals mass times acceleration. I want to use parentheses. So I'm going to put in the 10 times inside parentheses and then my acceleration inside parentheses. Now, in this easy example, you might like to say, well, I know this just means multiply the two numbers together. But get in the habit of using parentheses when you're evaluating the formula, okay? Because in money and much more complex formulas, especially when there's uh, negative signs, you know, like uh, you, you really need to be using parentheses. When you have negative values and there is differences in the formula, this can really get confusing. So just get in the habit. Just um, this is very much like evaluating functions. If you're familiar with what uh, that is, you want to always plug in your values, but you use parentheses, and then you want to double check. Okay, you want to double check that your that your um, 
you know, you plugged in everything correctly before you move forward. Now, let me make another point here. All right. And that's point number two is the correct UOM. Now, what I mean by that is the units of measure. This is really important. And uh, this is completely um, out of the realms of what I can go over in this video other than highlight. This is uh, really important because this is very specific to what you're studying. So if it's physics, chemistry, biology, sometimes when you're asked to do something, let, let's say we want to calculate a particular force, you have to make sure that the mass and the acceleration are um, in the correct units of measure to use that formula. Okay, so if you're in kilograms and your acceleration is in feet per second squared, that's not, you know, you're, you're basically using the standard system with the metric system, etc. So in order to get, you make sure that you have the correct units of measure, this may involve doing something called um, converting units of measure. And that is something specific to um what you're studying, you know, what, what particular subject you're studying, what science subject like physics or chemistry. And this is very, very common. Oftentimes, you know, uh, you have to change the units of measure so they're um, basically can be used with one another in the formula. So it's not a trivial thing. You have to really make sure you check that when you're using formulas, okay? But once you do have the correct units of measure and you're ready to go, then you want to plug in your values um, using parentheses. Okay. All right. So my third point here is PEMDAS. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's the order of operations. So for example, let's suppose I have some formula and it's basically like this. Okay. I'll explain this in a second. Okay, let's say I had some particular formula. Let's just say I'm finding a G, whatever that might be. Maybe it's gravity, maybe it's whatever the case is. So let's say I had some particular formula and I plugged in my values with parentheses and now I end, I end up with something like, like uh, what we're looking at here, okay? Well, this is another area where students go wrong. So these, these areas here were students very common places where students make mistakes. But the next one here is PEMDAS. So once I plug in these particular values, students don't follow the correct order of operations, right? And order of operations, if you recall from your basic pre-algebra middle school days is PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-S, right? Parentheses first, then exponents, and the multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, from whatever you see from left to right. People um, basically think they know this better than they think than they think it's like fractions like oh, okay i know this it's you know uh i can you know they got to go real fast but they make mistakes very very common for for people to get the wrong answer because they messed up on their order of operations although they correctly plug things in using parentheses they have the right units of measure very common for students to make a mistake um in order of operations so you want to manage that problem you want to work through it step by step by step and double check yourself, right? So in this case, you'd be doing um, uh, the parentheses first and something in the parentheses and you would go do the powers and you just be, gotta be very careful. All right, let me go ahead and erase this so I can talk about my last point. And the last point is solving for a different variable. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's suppose uh, let's take our basic uh, example here, force equals mass times acceleration. So your problem or your teacher can say, hey, calculate the force. So they want the force, but they're going to give you the mass and they're going to give you the uh, values for the acceleration. So here it's pretty easy, right? I just plug in uh, using parentheses uh, my values for M and A, as long as they're the correct units of measure and I would get the force. But that's, you know, typically you're not going to get problems so direct, okay? You might get something like this. You might get, um, I got this I got this force, okay? Some, I have this particular mass that's generating this force. What was the acceleration, okay? What was the respective acceleration? So formulas, they're given to you in one way, but they can be written in all, they're, they can be written in different ways. So it's very common, or it's most common, you're going to be, remember the formula as, as like, for example, these formulas are going to be given to you, but 
there's a equivalent ways to look at that formula. So for example, I can uh, look at this particular formula as force divided by mass is equal to acceleration. Okay. I can also look at, at this formula as force divided by acceleration gives me the mass. These are our equivalent formulas to this formula. Okay. So they're they're no different. But when you learn the formula, like let's say for example in physics, you're going to learn it this way. But these here are equivalent, right? Equivalent uh, ways algebraically to solve. So this formula is we write this in what we call in terms of f, right? Because it's, it's f equal. But in this formula over here, I have if I'm solving for acceleration, this is written in terms of a, and this is written in terms of m. So you need to be able to know how to solve for um, different variables within formulas. Okay, this is a com almost another complete video uh, in and of itself. I'm going to highlight this very uh, quickly, but. If you're not familiar with how to do this, then you need to take some time to do some uh, more work beyond this video. So let's just talk about F equals M times A. And let's suppose I want to rewrite this in terms of A. So I already told you the answer that it's, uh, um, force divided by mass is um, equal to, to acceleration. Okay, But in this case, if I want to rewrite this in terms of A, in other words, I want to have it in terms of A equals, I have three variables here. I have um, force, mass, and acceleration, right? So what you want to do is you want to look at the variable you're, that you want to solve for A and think of that as the only variable in this problem, okay? And think of these guys here temporarily treat them as if almost they were a number. Let me give you a, a, a kind of a, a little example. Let's let's make up a, an equation and think of F and M as different numbers. So let's say it's 10 equals, I'm just going to make up number, 2 times, let's say, A. Okay. So you can see the 10 is where the, is in the same spot where the F is, and the 2 is in the same spot as where the M is, and we still have our a right there, right? So if I gave you the equation, solve uh, this, solve uh, for A in the equation 10 equals 2 times A, you would say, oh, okay, that's easy. I just divide both sides by 2, right? And you would be correct. 10 divided by 2 is equal to A. So these steps here that you, you, know, that you took to solve for A are the same steps that we're going to do over here, okay? But this case, I have instead of a 2A, I have an M in front of the A. Okay, so here I would just simply divide both sides of the formula by M. Okay, and I would get F divided by M is equal to A. All right, so this is a quick kind of um, a very, very quick review on how you want to think about different variables when you're when you're rewriting the uh, formulas in terms of another variable, okay, than, than the one that's given to you another very common thing that you're going to be asked to do, okay? So if you're given the area, for example, let's talk about this formula real quick. Um, I can give you the area of a circle, and I want you to tell me the radius of it. So you would have to rewrite this formula in terms of R, okay? So again, algebraic manipulation, but things that you need to know, okay? So when we're working with formulas, let me just kind of wrap this up. You know, these are the these are big area, big things to be thinking about. Okay, so let's just quickly uh, review them. When you're evaluating evaluating values into your formula, make sure you're using parentheses. Okay. Second thing is make sure you're aware of the uh, units of measure and that you have the correct units of measure for the formula. But once you've done all that, you're left with just a, a mathematical uh, uh, numeric problem expression to solve. Solve for you got to be very careful with the order of operations. And then lastly. If you have to solve for a different variable, you need to know how to do that. And we kind of took a look at a very basic example, but you can clearly see it gets m much more sophisticated. So it's, this is an algebraic skill that you need to uh, make sure you have. But uh, let me go ahead and wrap this up. Um, some of those things like how to solve a uh, formula equation, all those things, those are stuff that I have on my uh, YouTube channel. I try to put a lot of that stuff out there. So please consider subscribing. By the way, too, if you want to have notification of my latest videos, you got to hit that bell button like on your smartphone. Um, 
And if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out, you know, maybe consider giving it a thumbs up and leave me the, uh, some feedback. I try to read as many comments as possible uh, just to kind of see what you might be interested in. But again, formulas, really, really important to work with. You're not going to escape them. You know, they're not just in mathematics. They're in science, physics, physical science, chemistry, electronics, etc., etc. So, but um, anyways, I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching and have a great day.